u okay so I'll say so we can so we do one thing at a time I'll say zero okay so it's just so we'll now consider this equation as a follow-up to this one and then here we'll encounter slightly different situation let me just make sure I yeah I think I got it all right okay oh yeah so and in this case we're considering a homogeneous equation to begin with so we can focus on the root on the roots and not so much on the particular solution so in this case the solution the general solution will be just the null space c1 times something plus c2 times something else so this is what the general solution will look like because it is a homogeneous equation the only only the null space is in the solution another way of saying it is that a particular solution is zero try it does it satisfy no. yeah so it is a particular solution and as we know uh, one particular solution is as good as any other okay so let's jump straight to the quadratic equation and see what happens okay can you think of two numbers that add up to minus 6 and their product is 10 okay uh, Alex can I can't so I will use a quadratic the quadratic formula the dreaded quadratic formula lambda equals I will say minus 6 because according to the informal poll that I did just a moment ago you guys are not aware of the special case where the middle coefficient where the linear coefficient is even and then the formula satisfies yourself you, you save yourself the step of dividing by 2 at the end factoring out 4 and so forth but uh, it's good to know but it's not so important and I will proceed with this expression if as if it's meaningful I will shortly share my book in progress on, comp on complex variables where the central idea is that this doesn't make any sense and you have to embrace it and to proceed as if it did make sense that's the spirit of mathematics so in mathematics so far you've encountered only things that make sense because they've been cultivated over thousands, hundreds, sometimes thousands of years, and it's delivered to you perfect. But when you discover new math, it makes no sense. Math is presented to you as a subject that makes total sense and is ultimately clear, no doubt, no question marks, nothing of the sort. Math, when you, study, when you work in math, is a completely opposite subject from what you expect it's uncertain it's unclear it's contradictory it's treacherous things make no sense and the key is to proceed as if things do make sense and to embrace uncertainties embrace the contradictions and work your way through them embrace them not reject them yeah when you just a quick, quick clarification when you say new math are you referring to mathematics that are new no, mathematics that's new to you, oh, new that you are developing. Like no, oh no, no, I'm talking about when you are discovering mathematics. Okay. When you are just creating mathematics, you have to embrace uncertainties. You shouldn't stop here. You should just go with it, and then you should understand why something didn't work, and and so forth. So more specific examples are helpful. So complex numbers are one of the best examples where the one person who just followed through despite the obvious contradiction made much greater sense of it than those who uh, stumbled upon the contradiction and rejected it so barrel through it and when you barrel through it you end up with minus three plus or minus square root of negative two negative one <laughs> negative one because the four comes out right negative four comes out as two gets cancelled negative one 
And when you encounter something like this, right now I'll just give it to you as a recipe. But when we study complex numbers, it will become a rigorous, elegant rule, which, which puts all of these possible combinations on a common footing and unites different branches of mathematics in a very unexpected and beautiful way. So here's what you do. You take this part that makes sense and that goes into the exponent. And then you take this part which doesn't make sense, what's under the square root, just this part without the minus. And that goes into the sines and cosines. So you end up with a hybrid. You end up with e to the minus 3t cosine 1t. So if this was a different number, I would put a different number there. I totally underlined the wrong thing. I apologize. It's not this that goes into sine and cosine. It's whatever multiplies the square root of minus 1. That's what goes into sine and cosine. It's just that in this case it's 1. I should have envisioned this and picked a different number. But it's whatever number ends up here, which could be 2 or 3 or square root of 7, whatever ends up here, that's what goes into sines and cosines. And e to the minus 3t sine 1t. I, in this case, I'll just write sine t because that's what normal people write. I wrote this one explicitly to match it up with this one that's missing in here. And so the linear algebra of what's going on is restored. Nothing's really different. Second order operator, two linearly independent elements in the null space. You can plug them into this operator and you'll see that you get zero. And if there was an inhomogeneous equation, then the roots really have, in in, except in those exceptional cases, has, nothing, has no bearing on your guess for the, for the particular solution. So that's the general solution in this case.